Abul Hassan from Egypt, Cairo. What are your thoughts on studying at Azhar Sharif and its curriculum compared to Medina? Barakallahu feek. Assalamu alaikum, Akhil Kareem. Question coming from Cairo, Egypt. What are my thoughts on studying in Azhar University, its curriculum, in comparison to Medina University? As we have explained before, it's not the move, but it's the movement. It's one of the pillars of Hadith Disciple School of Thought. It isn't the move, but it is the movement. It ain't about your school or your background or your resume, but it's about how you move. Somebody goes to Egypt, they study in Azhar, they can speak better, they can recite better, they teach classes, they have fiqh, they have faham, they have ilm. And then someone graduates from Medina with choppy Arabic, someone graduates from Medina with good Arabic but they don't teach classes, or they call up and this sheikh and this person and this sitting on talking about this one all day, and he's a deacon and so on and so forth, and he wastes himself. He wastes his life. He spent seven years, eight years out of your life, he came back to America. What change did you make? What impact did you make in your community, except for fitna? It's not about the move, it's about the what? The movement. The movement. So hypothetically speaking, hypothetically speaking, let's say that the curriculum in Medina is better, it's stronger, it's purer, but it doesn't mean that the one who graduated from that curriculum is going to teach the pure way to these people. And someone, hypothetically speaking, graduated from Azhar, in which the curriculum is inferior, hypothetically, we said, only what? Only hypothetically. And it's tainted, this Ash'ari Aqidah, this Bid'ah, so on and so forth, is there in Egypt. And he comes back, and he's upon the way of Ahl Sunnah al -Jumah. He says, I went to Egypt, I never believed in none of that crazy stuff. I never practiced none of those Bid'ah, I had the Aqidah of Ahl Sunnah, with Allah's attributes with regards to the rest of the deen. I'm, I'm Kitab and Sunnah, but that's why I was educated. And he teaches Bukhari, he teaches this book, he explains this tafsir, he helps his people. Medina doesn't mean anything. Because it's not about the move. It's only about the what? The movement. Assume what? Formlessness. Don't get stuck in one shape and one form. If you go to Egypt and you benefit and you learn and you teach that, Alhamdulillah. If you go to Medina and you benefit and you learn and you teach that, Alhamdulillah. The problem lies in which student of knowledge it is. Someone who's gullible, someone who's naive. Someone can easily be tricked and duped, and he goes there and he sucks up everything that his teachers say to him. And he comes back messed up. And the same can happen in Medina. But obviously, the religious, the political, the economic, and the social life in Saudi is night and day in Egypt. It's different. It's different. All the Arab countries have their ups and downs. So I know brothers that have studied in Egypt. Let's say brothers in Minnesota, Somali brothers. One brother. Perhaps he won't get upset by me mentioning his name, okay? Maybe I won't mention his name. The young Somali brother, he went to Egypt. He wasn't even in the college yet. He was still studying to get into the college because it's very strict and rigid conditions for getting into college. This guy was sharp as a razor blade, mashallah. His Arabic, his Quran, his akhlaq, his aqidah. He was a beautiful brother. And I would take him and prefer him over 20 other people that graduated from Medina. So it's not about the person, or it's not about the move, it's about the movement, okay? So therefore, to compare Medina to Azhar, which curriculum is better, which curriculum is stronger, I can't say that. Certain things I say for sure are stronger in Azhar, no question. And there are certain things that I can say that are stronger in Medina, without a question. And then there are other things which are relative, which are comparative, from person to person, subjective, and most importantly, as one of my teachers told me, when I graduated the bachelor's, I was going into the master's program, I said, what section should I go to, Sheikh? Which department should I do? He said, and this is a golden rule that he gave me. He says, Talib al-Ilm said, you didn't teach you high when I can. He said, the student of knowledge will produce wherever he goes. The student of knowledge will produce wherever he goes, meaning the real student of knowledge. If you have your head screwed down tightly on your shoulders, if you're sincere, if you're hard working, if you're patient and humble, you're going to benefit no matter wherever you go. You go to Egypt, you go to Malaysia, you go to South Africa, you're in New York City, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. You're going to benefit. And a lazy student of knowledge, a wannabe, an imitator, a pretender, uh, an imposter, or someone that really isn't humble, really isn't hard working, someone that doesn't scrape their knuckles on the ground and work hard, he's going to get minimum benefit even if he's in a gold mine.
even if he's in a gold mine, he's only going to come out with a nugget. He's only going to come out with a little bit of gold. You can be in the lands of the ulama, sitting with the ulama every day. We saw this, brothers, with the ulama, with the mashef, driving them around, taking them around. Have personal relationship with the mashef. He doesn't know anything. Yeah, there's no end, no fuck. Anyway, somebody who comes only once a night, sits, and he's learned and taking the legacy of that shit. And most importantly, he gives dawah, and he teaches, and he spins from what he has amassed. This is the most important thing, and this is the true, true nature of seeking him. Huh? And not to get caught up in a place. And it's not just Egypt and Medina. The same applies to him. This is, we want to say the truth, no matter who likes it or not. It's the best place to study in the world. There's no place like this in the whole dunya. This is the only place in which there's a sunnah. This is the only place. What is this speech? What is this speech? How many people you know who went to Yemen and came back? What have they done? What have they produced? What have they given? What are, who have they taught? Who have they trained and cultivated? And their brothers who went to other places. They may not have been as prestigious or solid or orthodox as certain places in Yemen. And they did wonders. Because it isn't about the place or the location. But it's about what you do with that knowledge. Huh? And be far from bigotry and fanaticism. Do not be a bigot for Medina. Medina, 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 Medina. That's it. Ezra, 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 that's it. It's only about the match, the match, the match, the match, the match. That's it. What is this fanaticism? The Prophet ﷺ, what did he say when he heard the companions fighting and arguing? They got into an argument. One man said, Ya al Muhajideen. Oh, the Muhajideen, the Muhajideen. What are the virtue of the Muhajideen? What end did the Muhajideen have? The Muhajideen were better than the Ansar. They did both. They left their homes and they did Nusra in Medina. And another man said, Ya al Ansar. He says, the Ansaris, the Ansaris. The Prophet said, what did he say? He said, Adawa al Jahiliya Tiwana Baina al He says, This is the call of Jahiliya? And I'm in your presence? Are you serious? You going back to Jahiliya? This group, that group, this place, this location, this people, those people? He says, Da'uha, fa'inha muntina. He says, Get rid of it right now because it stinks. Get rid of it because it stinks. Don't be a fanatic and a bigot for no school, for no country, for no shake. There's benefit wherever you go. There's knowledge, there's virtue in this place, just like there's knowledge and virtue what? In that place. And if you want to get technical, many teachers in the same University of Medina came from Azhar. They came from Azhar in the 60s and the 70s. They were Azharis. Many of them established the curriculum and did things in Medina. Huh? And it doesn't mean that everyone has to agree on every single point. It doesn't mean that every Muslim has to agree on every single message, every issue. It doesn't mean that. Where does thinking come from? Where does it come from? It doesn't mean that. Respect what's there. This is your way. I don't say that. I don't choose to go there, but I respect it. Huh? That's, that's the correct way. Learn what's best.